Today we're in Los Angeles and I have some time so I'm going to go visit the Peterson Automobile Museum. I've always wanted to go and they're now allowing you to take video in the vault as well as the regular museum. So let's take a look and see what we can find there. Here it is, Peterson Automotive Museum. Your destination is on the right. Oh, I think I missed the garage. I'll turn around. Oh, GT40. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow, that is a stunning looking car. Hey guys. How you doing? You taking this somewhere? Yeah, it's going to a show. I can't believe after all these years it still looks as good as any other modern sports car. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Wow, it's so beautiful. They thought about every detail. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Oh, love the color too. Even in the parking garage there's interesting cars. They said they were going to start producing these as early as 2019, but they just delivered their first one recently. Oh, these are part of the BMW R Cars collection. The BMW M1. Nice. So these R Cars were first produced because racers wanted some interesting art on their cars, but now it's more of a marketing thing. I think there's about 20 in total. The Ferrari Enzo. This is a dream car of mine. This was one of the most advanced cars in its time. And I have a lot of fond memories of it because I picked this car a lot in the original Forza Motorsport came on the original Xbox. These are cool. Oh, that's a Lotus uh, concept bike. I think the guy who designed uh, those original Tron light cycles designed this. And this is that new Aston Martin motorcycle. The 918 Spider. I remember when this first came out. This is when electrification first started coming out as a performance enhancement, not just as a fuel savings thing. Very nice. This reminds me of a cartoon I used to watch on Saturday mornings called Speed Buggy. Very cool. Here we are entering the museum. Well, oh, this is interesting. It's a Corvette, but it looks a lot like a Ferrari. Ah, uh, it was designed by Scaglietti. Nice. The original 87 Benz motor wagon. So this Benz motor wagon was kind of the first iteration of a modern car. It was the first chassis built specifically for a motor, not like a horse-drawn carriage modified to add a motor. So it's kind of considered the first self-driven vehicle. The silhouette in the background there is a 1769 Cugno. It was one of the first self-propelled vehicles. Look at the size difference. The E-Type, this was a force to be reckoned with back in the day. I think it won the 24 Hours of Le Mans three consecutive years. It does like 150 miles per hour top speed and zero to 60 in under seven seconds for a car that was made in the 60s. It's incredible. I like this movie, but I don't remember the bike. Classic DeLorean time machine. The DeLorean is actually coming out with a new car called the Alpha. Looks pretty interesting. It's an electrical car, so obvious tie-in. Used to love Starsky and Hutch back in the day. Gone in 60 Seconds, a great movie for car fanatics. This Batman was probably one of the first modern superhero movies. Tim Burton had like such a weird spin on everything. He's kind of cool. Michael Keaton. He's coming back in the Flash movie, I think. Well, and this car is from Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible, but I don't remember the car, but it had an awesome motorcycle race scene in it. Didn't watch a Scooby-Doo movie, but I remember this definitely from all the cartoons I used to watch when I was a kid. The Mystery Machine, the capers we solved. And Kit, 
Wow. This is funny, they made a life-size version of Lightning McQueen from those Cars movies. This was made by that Runge guy. Uh, he used to be a professional snowboarder, but then he became a car builder, and he hand-builds these cars. This one, he formed all the aluminum on the body by hand with like traditional tools. What's well, beautiful. What makes this Willys Jeep station wagon so unique is that it's made out of metal. So before this, a lot of these station wagons were made out of wood. They sold a ton of these, like 300,000 of these. Sandbar pickup and the Fuji cabin. They made these in Japan and they marketed them as a scooter with a roof, like a little two-seater. Kind of cool. Interesting looks. Almost looks like you can float. Has a little face as well. The classic 57 Corvette. Probably one of the most iconic pieces of automotive Americana. It set a new bar by achieving one horsepower for every cubic inch. Little known fact. This was designed by the famous racer Dan Gurney. He wanted people to sit in the motorcycle as opposed to on it. This is one of those classic woodies. It's so interesting that they used wood for body panels. It must have been hard to maintain these. Those button down windows is because station wagons used to be considered more utilitarian. So they didn't bother putting glass windows in. Here's some beautiful motorcycle history from all the beginnings. You can really see the bicycle roots in some of these motorcycles. So interesting. They called them cafe racers because it would describe the kids who hung out in cafes and raced their motorcycles. And the classic Indian Scout. Uh, here are some uh, classic sport bikes. The CBR 900 RR. I remember when this bike came out, it was like the real first really light, super powerful leader bike. And the classic Ninja 7. This section is commemorating McLaren's papaya livery on all its winning cars amongst all the different race series. Look at those tires. Crazy. Apparently, during a race, the tires can lose a pound of rubber. And more impressive than the acceleration of these machines is how fast they can stop. I heard somewhere they can go 0 to 160 and back to 0 in under 4 seconds. Man, look at everything on this car is built for aero. The suspension components, anything that touches the wind. I heard the Formula 1 cars create so much downforce they can drive upside down. Hyper cars that every little boy or man's dream garage is filled with. This was the first car to reach 300 miles per hour. The amount of air and water that passes through the engine every minute at full speed is crazy. 60,000 liters of air and 800 liters of water just to keep the engine cool. I remember when the Navera came on the scene, it was the craziest, quickest car, 1.9 seconds to 60. It would do sub nine quarter mile. They merged with Bugatti in 2021. Now the company is called Bugatti Rimac. This is the Porsche Vision Gran Turismo concept. It was a car designed just for the video game. Look at that glass canopy, so cool. This would never get into production. The Hyperion hydrogen supercar. So the Cyan was the first hybrid Lamborghini. But instead of using batteries, they used a supercapacitor to store the energy for weight savings. I guess this was the precursor to the just now released Revelto. Look at that butt. Personally, I always thought the rear of the Lamborghini was the best angle. Those rear fins are insane too. The dash graphics in the Lamborghini always look futuristic. Look at that carbon weave, look at the color, it's so cool. I think this is the last version of the FXX series. They were made specifically for track, increased downforce. Even the driving modes were very specific to the track. 
That's basically a racing car cockpit. Look at that rear fin. Kind of looks like a shark. This is the Tricolore. This was specifically built as a tribute to the Italy Air Force acrobatic team. I think they were going to make one, but eventually made three of them. The 1-1 one, one is cool. Just the name is cool. It's the first car to achieve one metric horsepower to one kilogram. 1360 PS to 1360 kilograms. This might have been the first production car to have carbon fiber wheels and the first production car to have that rear wing with the supports on the top as opposed to the bottom to clean up the airflow. Here's some hot rods. Love the flames. This one was designed by Chip Foose. I was never really into hot rods, but love how the engines are on display sometimes. So cool to look at. It'd be definitely pretty wild to drive them around. That looks interesting. Maybe if we have more time later. We have some stuff for the kids. Looks fun. An exploded view of Model Y. It's kind of cool how simple it is because the electrical motor has so less moving parts than a conventional motor. Model S prototype. The easiest way to tell is the headlights. I remember seeing this in the news. It seemed like such a, not a hack job, but it was kind of hobbled together using an Elise. But I guess that's what it was. I mean, Tesla had probably a handful of employees back then. So I believe this Elise body was the first car Lotus they ever brought into the United States. Look at the chassis with the batteries. It's really changed the way cars are manufactured now. All the Teslas. Here's another exploded Tesla with uh, an exposed battery floor. The Cybertruck. This was the craziest looking thing and I think it looks even crazier now that so many pickups have come out already. The F-150 Lightning, the Hummer, the Rivian. This thing is huge and crazy looking. Just a dummy interior. And I don't even understand how the crumple zones work if this is all stainless steel. The Cyber Quad was kind of a cool touch. All this looks so science fiction. It's funny they have a little display here of the sledgehammer fiasco. Looks like Tesla has a good sense of humor. The Hyperloop. I wouldn't want to be on the maiden voyage of this. These are actual SpaceX spacesuits that were used. Elon Musk launched his Tesla Roadster into space, I think in 2018. A little timeline of the different rockets SpaceX has designed. This is going to be interesting now with the craziness of machine learning and advancing AI. They call it Optimus, but I think they should call it Terminator. I don't know if this is the biggest museum collection in the world, but it's got to be one of the biggest. They never used to let people film in the vault, but I guess they changed things up because of maybe COVID and to drum up more people to come to the museum. Look at all these cars. The cars here span the entire history of automobiles, from really early examples all the way to modern supercars. James Hatfield from Metallica. I didn't realize he was such a collector. Beautiful. Reminds me of the Continental from The Matrix. What I really remember about The Matrix car is the very cool suicide doors, which I believe all the Lincoln Continentals in the 60s had, including this one flame floor mats. That's a prerequisite. Come on now, that's got presents. When they first brought the 356 to the US, they thought it needed an interesting name. That's why it's called the Continental, but they changed it back to the 356 after a while. You can totally see the 911 stylings coming from this. The Wonder Car collection. I love the colors when BMW came back into the luxury sedan market after leaving for about five years to compete with Mercedes and such. These all use the M30 straight six engine. Now this is a classic, the Cobra 427. 
I think there's only about 200 or so of these. It's so beautiful. And the XJ220, one of the original supercars, the fastest car of its time. Another beautiful classic, the 300 SL Gullwing. This was a performance marvel when it was built. It could do over 160 miles per hour. It was the first direct injected motor. SL stands for super light, or super light. And to make the car as streamlined as possible, they couldn't use conventional doors, and that's why they had the gull wing. Beautiful. The Ford GT, I wasn't a big fan of this. Uh, they didn't call it the GT40 because the original car was actually 40 inches high, and this is 44 inches tall. The second version of the GT was is much more successful in my opinion. I do like that they kept that interesting door detail. This is that crazy car I saw Doug DeMuro drive in one of his videos. And this is more of a marketing thing than an actual car I think. Now this is an interesting car. It's a Ferrari Barchetta and it was gifted to Henry Ford II from Enzo Ferrari because back in the day Ferrari and Ford had thoughts of amalgamating. So the Zetter is an engineer that worked at Chrysler and this was his idea to combat Corvette but they never really made it. The Corvair was probably inspired by the Volkswagen when they put the engine in the rear, but it was its demise because people thought it was unsafe. Another beautiful hot rod. Wow, that blue is striking with the black engine bits. This would definitely be fun to cruise around in. This is that bat pod from the Dark Knight movies. Never understood how the front wheel would rotate sideways. In the bat cycle from the original Batman TV series, Robin would sit in that sidecar and I think I remember detaching and he would drive that separately like a little go-kart or something. Pretty funny. I had a little model car of this when I was a little kid. Loved this car. So futuristic. And that old school police light on top because they were kind of like the police. This was Saddam Hussein's personal car and here's a row of uh, estate cars or cars made specifically for like dignitaries and stuff. This car had those rear platforms where the bodyguards can stand on. Wasn't really a big speed racer fan but this is kind of cool. I guess it was made for the movie. The movie was interesting and the 308 GTS loved this car. Fell in love with this car from watching Magnum PI. The Julia TZ, uh, the Z stands for Zagato, who was a, an incredible automotive designer and builder in Italy. All his cars are beautiful. Some dragsters. I heard that top fuel dragster engines have to be rebuilt after every run. I guess this is the section of race cars. The Charger Daytona's rear wing is still one of the craziest factory wings I've seen on a car. And love these old F1 cars. They were stripped of everything that wasn't needed to go fast. I didn't realize the Smothers Brothers were into racing, but this is their car. And some other Formula and Indy cars. The classic split window Stingray. These are special because they only made these the first year of production, but they stopped making them because people complained that they couldn't see out of the rear window. So it makes this car more rare and valuable. I know the name Studebaker, but I didn't realize they make more modern cars. I always associate that name with old timey cars from the 30s and 40s. Look at that rear curved glass, crazy. That would be a complex piece of glass to manufacture. I think one of the executive directors of the museum also is part owner or runs Moto America. I kind of remember this when this came out. It's still just as challenging to look at. It was the Honda concept for a hydrogen car. I feel like hydrogen might come back again. Electricity is showing a lot of flaws. I remember seeing this solar car back in the day as well, but actually I guess all these solar cars kind of look similar. 
when this was competing, it would have covers over those wheels to make it more aerodynamic. It's crazy how someone could fit in there. The Fisker Karma. Such a good looking car. I remember hearing something about the roof being the biggest single glass solar panel fitted to a car. Look at the details on this car. They never make a car like this again. It looks so it looks like it's custom made. This is an interesting car. Super interesting history. It was a wedding gift from France to the then Prince of Persia. How about one flag? How about two? No, let's make it five. America. They named these ghosts because of how quiet it was. Look at this crazy horn. So cool. Some old gas pumps. Very cool. And the gift shop. Let's buy some swag. Shirt one. Shirt two. So that was the Peterson Automotive Museum. It was great. I don't know if you can spend hours upon hours there. It was great to see all those cars that I've seen in the magazines and on the internet in person. Uh, it was kind of expensive, but if you're ever in California and you have a cloudy morning to spare, I would definitely recommend it. Have a great weekend, everyone. If you want to see more about other classics, check out one of these videos.